This book is titled I Swallowed the Moon, the Poetry of Gulzar. And uh, it's, it's a book on uh, Gulzar Sahib's poetry, both film as well as non-film poetry. I've tried to analyze him as a progressive poet in popular culture. And I've analyzed about 500 of his songs and 700 of his poems, trying to bridge between the literary and the mass cultures. And with regard to the structure of the book, initial few pages are the, the analysis, about, say, about 200 pages, and then there's an in-depth interview of the poet, where Gulzar Saab speaks about his take on language, on form, on what he thinks is poetry, the mixing of different words in a single poem, and a little bit on film songs as well. And after the interview is an, an, it's a collection of nearly all his works, till the time the book went in print. So it's an exhaustive list of his writings along with the, the main themes, the characteristics which he has in his poetry. To the first question, actually there's no specific answer to it. There is no serious and honest answer to it. I, like so many of us, have had a fascination of his writings. The first film that I recall watching in my childhood is Namkeen. I must have watched it on Doordarshan. And somehow his films left an impact. And as and when I started listening to songs, to, to reading some of his works, I could listen to the songs and could understand that this is his. There was a similarity maybe in his imagery, the, the way he juxtaposes his imagery, the use of his oxymoron. I could figure out there was a connecting line, but I could not actually place everything together. And then when I wanted to read a lot, surprisingly, not much was written. I mean, he, we, we read his work, but in terms of books, there were only two. One was by uh, Meghna Guzar, his daughter, which is a personal biography, and the other was Cyber Chatterjee, which, is, which talks only on his films. So that kind of, and that was the time when I wanted to start my PhD and just hit on. And uh, sorry, what was the? Uh, when, how did you realize that the thing became the popular ah. culture? He is the only poet in the Hindustani film industry where the poems are used interchangeably. You pick up his books, there are poems. The same poems reach the films. They are used as a song. After a few years, another song which is already featured in the film comes to a book. So now, the, the travel from the book to the film or from the film to the book, this is a unique characteristic. The only poet that I could think of other than Gulzar Sahib was Sahir Sahib. But again, uh, in, in, in my analysis of something, maybe because he's written more than uh, Sahir Sahib, but the interchangeable use of poetry. It is just fascinating. I mean, he picked up a uh, poem from his, uh, from his book, used it in the film Kinara, just changed one word because he thought that was not the language of the character. And, and I, I don't know if you, if you remember Andhi, where Sanjeev Saab is, a, although he's a manager of a hotel, he's a poet. And he calls up his wife and he recites a poem over the phone. Later on, a book was released which had that poem. So that interchange was, was amazing. How does he do it? Because he, I mean, when I'd interviewed him and I asked him question, his answer was, uh, I mean, I write, I mean, whatever comes to me kind of a thing. And then I place it wherever it's suitable. He said, I do not written specifically sit and write, okay, now this is for the book or this is for the film. And it kind of made sense, kind of made sense when you see that it's, it's fitting the bill. See, that is uh, another aspect, for example, uh, the kind of, okay, we take a couple of uh, very popular songs. I would like to take the example of Kajrare. Kajrare and so is Namak, the Umgara song. Very popular, but the way he has picked up, I mean, uh, both Biri as well as uh, Namak are from the folk tradition. So you have popular as well as the literary. So he's taken a folk, I mean, he's taken a folk ballet, brought it to the popular. So that is a beautiful bridge. Another example that I can give you is he's picked up uh, couplets from uh, earlier classical Urdu poetry. Dil dhoondita hai phir wahi fursat ke raat din is a ghalib couplet. He picks up the couplet, writes a complete song on it. We love the song. So picking up beat folk, 
beat classical Urdu poetry, bringing it to the genre of popular culture. The third aspect of bridging the popular and the literary is his use of language. He goes on with explanations. If, if you read his word, you know, sabza, sabza yane greenery. So when he's writing a book for children, the child would, maybe in, in today's scenario, the children would only be comfortable with the word greenery. But he makes sure that the child is also acquainted with the word sabza. So he says, sabza yane greenery. So again, he takes on the language and brings it, I mean, taking the literary and brings it to the popular foray. I Swallowed the Moon is actually a translation of one of his uh, lines from a poem, or rather a song. This is the opening line of the Omkara song, Namag Me Chand Nigal Gai. So it is a translation. That's at one level. The deeper level is, he himself says at a point, I have the copyright over the moon. The ways that he has described the moon, the ways he has compared different things to the moon is amazing. No other poet in the Hindustani language has used this image of the moon. I mean, at one place it's like a roti, it's somewhere it's like a kangan. I mean, like chand nigal gai. And to think of it as someone is trying to swallow. I mean, I, and I have analyzed this imagery of the moon, say about in 40 pages, if you read, the number of places that he's dealt with, it's sometimes the moon is playful, it's, it's full of sorrow. Somehow I wanted the title to be, and then we were mulling over it, and there were various, we thought of serving the moon, different titles until finally this was decided. The PhD took an exact of four years and four days. I mean, between, I mean, it, it went on my record kind of a thing that she's done it in a good time. So that's how I know it's four years and four days. And believe me, these four years were a lot of hard work, but sheer pleasure. I mean, when I could see the other research scholars going all over the place looking for data and their research analysis, I could sit in my, in my room and listen to wonderful songs, good, read good poetry. But and in coming of the book, it took another year to come out as a book. And uh, it's been a little crisper. We've done some editing to make it a little crisper, but by and large, it has not, not much has lost. Because even when I was writing the thesis, when I was drawing these uh, gaps and everything, maybe a little bit from the background when I'm talking more about the progressive poetry, when I'm talking more about the Hindi, Urdu, Hindustani debate, a couple of things, uh, but that is to make the book more crisper. But otherwise, most of it is retained.